uh, Mr. Griffith is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to I'm going to play off of that slightly different uh, tact and rearrange the way I was going to ask my questions. Mr. Clocker, you were talking about data for members. One of the things I think could be a real uh, opportunity for us in AI is to do things like quickly and, uh, and automatically have an AI create bill summaries, um, getting hearing transcripts a lot faster. That can in help us internally. Uh, two of the other things I think would help the institution both on the floor and committee activity would be a voice recording of all of the documents so that, uh, that a lot of people fly and they can read on the airplane if they want to. I drive home four hours each way uh, and then I drive all over my district. I listen to a lot of stuff in the car. If suddenly, you know, without too much trouble, I can get, and I know there's some apps I could purchase that would convert them, but we've got to run them, you got to take pictures of them and run them through. If we could get those things done quickly uh, so that uh, we could listen to uh, reports, bills, amendments, and then last but not least, again, helping members get through all the data, I believe AI could help us do, you know, almost instantaneously, not instant, but close to it, amendments on the fly, on the floor, that would really help us out in making the process go forward. Are you all looking at some of those things? We are, and uh, I think um, I, what's, I think interests about all those use cases is, is a lot of that is the work your staff do today for you to prepare you or, or, to, or to provide a summary for you as you, as you travel home. Well, and what I do is I, yeah. is I actually read the text of, yeah. of any bill that I think I'm going to vote for, which is a lot of them, and then I get dissuaded as I read them. But uh, if I think I'm going to vote for it, I read all, all the words. It sure would be a lot easier to listen to it. And then if I've got a problem on page 14 or page 5,000, okay, they're not <laughs> quite that bad, but sometimes in the thousands, I can call my staff and say, get me the text to yes. read that specifically, you know, email me that particular section of the bill. And uh, can you think y'all can work on that? I do, absolutely. And, and a lot of those use cases you talk about are, are, are about summarizing public information, yeah. right? And so I think we can move rapidly on those. Uh, when you talk about drafting amendments, I think that's a, a very different story uh, involving Ledge Council, and I can kind of tell you they're, they're concerned about the appropriate use of, of drafting le legislative language. Well, I think that's up for the member to decide, sure. but, but it's a yeah. tool where if you, you hear something and you want to make a quick Great. Uh, amendment, I mean, I, I can remember uh, Don McEachin and I both agreed on something in committee that needed to be changed, and everybody's like, well, let's get staff to do that. Don and I could have probably plugged that into AI and had it out in about five minutes. We might have been able to do it on paper in about 10, yeah. but, uh, but they wanted to get it through and run through the staff, so I think we'd be more efficient. Um, Mr. Halpern wants to answer it on this, I think. Well, to facilitate a lot of these uh, applications, you need good data underneath, and that's one of the things that GPO tries to do, is we'll take text files from a lot of a lot of folks uh, involved in the process here, we try and convert that into good machine readable data, XML based. Uh, the, the legislative branch standard is based around uh, United States legislative markup, that's our flavor of XML, and the more documents we can deliver in that, in that format, the broader the range of applications you'll have, whether it's reader applications, whether it's the ability to synthesize uh, that data, more of that that is in that machine-readable data format, uh, the more flexibility we're going to have going forward. I appreciate that. Mr. Clark, I'm going to switch back to what was originally my first question, uh, but I, I was feeding off Ms. Sewell's uh, questions. Um, are you all exploring whether AI could be helpful in tracking utility costs or other operating costs on the Hill? And, and as an example, I was told one time that everything in Rayburn is pretty much on the same uh, system, and so we really don't know what costs this area and that area. Are you looking at ways that for commercial operations or if, if a particular office, even if it's my office, that uses more electricity, you know, by 15 or 20 percent more than other offices, so that we might be able to figure out ways to bring down our, our utility costs and our use of the, those energy or utilities? Uh, what we're exploring is uh, looking at public house data, about public find how the house spends money and, and using the AI tools to analyze it to look for opportunities, whether it's certain products members are buying that we need to be a little more quicker about finding a better price. Um, the architect of the Capitol you know, runs the facility, and I'm sure they are, are thinking about those things around 
uh, utility cost, uh, it's, it's, it, these tools are going to be appropriate for those use cases. You're going to have to think, you know, be careful about what data you're putting into it at this stage, if that makes sense. And we have some privacy concerns yes. too, but my time is up and so I will yield back. 